That's a new fastest lap for Theobald. Three, sixteen point one. <laughs> The guy behind has just done a 41.7. Pit exit's clear. Okay, Jeff, we've got two laps. Let's get this done. <laughs>
Just done a 41.7. <laughs> That's the end of the session, P4. Is there a uh, graphic setting to uh, remove the loft? <laughs> Did you do a 702 on your warm-up lap? Yes. <coughs> That's more impressive to me than the qualifying lap. That's a pretty good warm-up lap. You need the fits with a full head of steam and don't let off. Yeah, I've been doing that. I even swing way wide before you turn into the, you know, pit lane part in turn two. So I shift into fourth when I'm still in the pit lane. But I think I get like 197 maybe, 196 exiting there. Uh, I don't look at low speed. I look at high speed. I don't know why. On that warm-up lap, did you shift the fifth before you got to the, the third corner? The is 26 no, Celsius. No, okay, no, Jeff, no. be ready. Watch for the lights. Stay okay. fourth so you get around to the front stretch. Yeah, I'm using fourth till I get to the front stretch. I'm winding it. I couldn't let the grasshopper beat the teacher. <coughs> I can't believe I got this VR thing and I'm looking over at your car while I'm talking to you. <laughs> Is there any scratches on it? 
not yet. I think the right rear is going down, though. I think. Nah, that'll help me power slide in and out of the corners. That's fine. Yeah, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Just about to turn in, turn one and three. <laughs> I got up yesterday morning and it was this big old ball of fire in the sky. <coughs> yeah, did you get sunburned or something? Yeah, they had to tell me that it was the sun. I couldn't believe it. I haven't seen it for so long. Yeah, you should, jump, you should come to Norway. We see it every second year or something. That would make me one miserable person. I got two vehicles locked up all the way along in the garage. I can't wait to get out. I get them out yesterday. Now it's going to rain on Wednesday. Yeah, that's typical. Good luck, everybody. Floor it. Green, green, green. Car inside. He's still there. Clear on the inside. Car inside. He's still with you. The car ahead is Theobald. And still there. Inside. Somebody followed me into the paint, didn't get out of it. And I turned left because I thought you were going to lose. It's a car low, stay high, a clear low. All right, Jeff, decent start. We can build something from here. I wouldn't do that again the first lap, bud. Well, I didn't want to go right and take out that. William blocked the roof. Come on back out and play, bud. Oh, I will. <laughs> oh, on the low side. Still there. He's still with you. He's still there. Clear low. The guy behind has just done it. 41.7. The guy ahead has just done it. 41.6. Yeah. I need to find that graphic setting to move them all. Going outside track limits. Come on, keep it between the lines. You okay, mate? It takes about an hour to be towed. Is now leading. Where'd you go, William? Backwards. The leader has just done a 41.6.
Tracks clear. Push, push, push. Catch that. So see what she was doing, and I hit the wall right behind you. I'm right off the front of my car. <laughs> it should be. Good race, guys. Sorry I beat you up, Alexander, but I get what they give me.
Rocket exits clear. On your right. He's still with you. Be right. It's clear. Push. Clear. Push now. How's my fuel? 5.3. Gallons remaining.
How long's left? 12 minutes remaining. Eighth place. That last lap was a 142.88. Go, go, go! Faster car approaching. This guy's the fast leader. Right. Blue flag. He can have all the space he wants when he uh, I mean, lets me get around the corners safe. Couple of corners, mate, and then you can have that straight. It's all yours. Well, on your right. Yeah, right I see him. Clear. That's a GTE. That lap was a 143.44. Sector 3 is 2.4 seconds off the pace. There's a faster car approaching. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Don't worry, Jeff. We got this. Blue flag. Flag. Really fast trying to get up with the big guys with you in road. Oh, car to my right. Yes, flash me right. Clear right. <laughs> nice one, see the bit, buddy. Just done a 142.70. Oh, that was pretty harsh on my brake there. I didn't really want to stab it that hard. Got some reference points, I did. I uh, pick out on the floor and I just overshot it, so I felt like I need to. There's a faster car approaching. Brake a bit harder there.
temp is 38 Celsius. Here we go, get ready. Green, green, green. Right side. He's still with you. Right side's clear. Okay, let's find a good rhythm. Make some places. On your right side. Clear right. <laughs> Looks like P five's gone off in the corkscrew. <laughs> Clement is leading the race. All right, Jeff, just keep hitting your marks. This is looking good. E5. Car left, left side's clear. Car on your left side, you're clear on the left. Yellow flag, keep your wits about you mate. The gap in front has increased, it's now about 7.3. There's an incident in the corkscrew, we think it might be Clement. Leader has just done a 143.14. The guy on your left. He's still there. Clear left. Jeff, come on, track limits. <laughs> we think P5 
25 has binned it in a corkscrew. <laughs> Track limits, keep it between the lines. <laughs> side, be on the left. <laughs> Incident in, rainy curve. We think P5 has binned it in, turn 11, yellow flag, watch your speed. There's a car behind, take care, rejoin him.
flag. Oh, on your right. Right side's clear. Sixth place. Halfway home, got plenty of fuel, P5. Looks like P4 has binned it in, turn 10. Spitting. Say, Jeff, track limits, come on. Push, 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 or we'll lose this place. This is terrific. Exactly what we came here for. B4. Trying to catch up with you, Fury. The C-Class, going to race the races you are in. 
The gap behind is now 3.5 seconds. I just want to stick this fourth place in. I'm not reading chat, I know you're typing. Um, I need to get that where it talks to me, I need to get that set up. But we ought to host each other. When I'm not streaming, I'll host you. When you're not streaming, you can tell me a host. I can get that set up if you want. Yeah, I think he's going to pass. I'll give it to you on the straightaway, buddy. Don't hit me in the ass. Those track limits, or we'll get a penalty. Right side, clear right. Oh my god. We think P5 has binned it in the corkscrew. Oh uh, yeah, I know. I pretty much screwed him over there. And on purpose, not an accident. left. That's what I understand. It shows me the white flag, but it says two laps left. So is this not like NASCAR, it's over when it's over, when the first guy crosses, or do I actually got to finish my lap? I'm trying to check her play, but it's going to tell me one more lap. Does that mean I got to go one more lap?
So does my crew chief have a name? Or do you just call him that? Hmm. I think it's too late to join the dollar and dash. Yep, too late. Not sure if you're still watching, but do you uh you want to share a host? You want me to host you here? Let me get this set up. Want me to host you when uh, when I'm not on? I'll do that. But do you uh? Oh, no one. You want to share a host? Talk. Let's see. You're already hosting me. Let's see. I need to host you. Uh... All right. I'm going to add you. I got you set up on the host. All right. Da, 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 da. I think that's it. Now you're going to be hosted. Check this out. What all games does this go for? Let's see. Set of course. Uh, Awesome. Yeah, I actually, uh, I stream, uh, you're over in the UK, right? So, let's see, you're five, six hours ahead of me, I think. Uh, yeah, I actually, uh, I'm off work four months out of the year, December through April. I just went back to work, um, 
So my my game times will be around five in the evening till eleven at night from here on out. Except the weekends, I pretty much go all day. But in the winter time for the four months, I pretty much stream all day, like eighteen hours a day. <laughs> ah, eleven oh eight there. It is six oh eight here. So yeah, you're five hours ahead of me. Yep, they got all the games. Repeat, please. It's license class and everything. <laughs> Keep crying on what I'm doing. <laughs> says a lot of stuff. Let's see. Yeah, I uh I noticed you just I think you just started streaming not too long ago, right? Fury I think uh, you're not doing too bad because I think it looks like you just started getting the followers and stuff. If you hold steady, you'll be able to get a subscribe button. Um, I haven't got one yet. Of course, the game I was playing for the last three or four years before it wasn't too popular. Um, but yeah, I've been getting a, a lot of views for iRacing. Yeah, so... Uh, I'll be getting the uh, Oculus Rift here I think in two weeks maybe and uh, yeah I'll be getting it it looks pretty uh, pretty awesome you don't use the Oculus Rift it looks like you it looks like you use the big one the heavy one right So I'll have I have a webcam already, but I'll be getting it set up pretty soon. Yeah, HTC Vive. That's what you have. You have the little the the one that's just a little heavier. Yeah, well, I've been researching both of them before I buy one. Um, I guess everything's leading to the Oculus from what I'm reading, so I guess that's the way I'm going. I think it's a little more expensive, but eh, whatever. Let me see some more of these. Pit stop, change my left front. Huh. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Um, I noticed when you're racing, since you don't look at um, your chat how do you get it brought up can I get it my uh, 
my chat brought up on my screen somehow or I I think every time someone types in your chat you actually hear what they say through voice text to speech right oh there's HTC Vive Pro there's two different ones I didn't know there was there's two different ones let's see HTC Vive Pro. Here is information about the HTC Vive. So there's two. Holy shit. $1,400. What's, what's the difference? Is it better quality? HTC Vive is the second major virtual reality system to arrive this spring, coming roughly a week after the Oculus Rift that was a giant hit in my household, especially with my nine-year-old Samuel. While Sam and the rest of us were equally enthralled with HTC Vive, maybe even more so, though there are some added challenges. HTC co-developed the Vive with a company called Valve. Now through such VR systems, you're magically transported to some other world or place, your brain tricked into believing that you're on the top of a mountain or exploring out of space. Both systems mostly cater to gamers at this stage with Valve's Steam V. I don't think that's the pro in the video I'm watching. Let's see. What if HTC could make the Vive VR headset again, but with better ergonomics and higher quality screens? That's basically the Vive Pro. Is that what you got, the Pro? It's not a sequel, it's more of a remaster. One that incorporates everything VR headset makers have learned over the past few years. At $799 with no sensors or controllers though, it's strictly for enthusiasts with plenty of disposable income. The first thing you'll notice with this headset is that it's a deep blue compared to the original's all black design. It's almost twice as long, but paradoxically, it's also significantly lighter. That extra length is put to good use with the new head strap system. It's similar to the deluxe audio accessory HTC released a year after the Vive's debut, which added headphones and replaced the original head straps. While this new system looks a bit complex at first, it's actually a pretty straightforward way to put on and adjust the Vive Pro. You simply place the eyepiece over your face, rest the back strap against your head, and rotate the dial to straighten it. There's an adjustable band at the top, but that's something you only have to deal with the first time you put it on. It's a huge improvement over what HTC launched a few <coughs> years ago, which involved using three separate Velcro straps to secure the Vive to your head. That was functional, but clunky, and coupled with the additional weight of the original headset, it was tough to wear comfortably for extended periods. The Vive Pro, on the other hand, balances the weight of the headset well, similar to Sony's PlayStation VR. Its built-in headphones are also hard to miss. They have a generous amount of padding and can be adjusted easily. While they may make the headset look a bit clunky, they're far more convenient than the earbuds in the Vive, which was just another wire to deal with. The Vive Pro also has significantly more plush cushioning around its entire faceplate, and even more at the back of the head strap. The Vive, meanwhile, just had some basic foam face protection. I haven't even gotten to the biggest technical upgrade yet, the higher resolution screens. The Vive Pro's OLED displays run at 1440 by 1600 pixels per eye. That's 78% more pixels over the original Vive. It keeps the same 110 degree field of view though. That's standard for high-end VR headsets like the Oculus Rift and Samsung HMD Odyssey, but it would have been nice to see HTC push things forward a bit. The Vive Pro is currently being sold as a standalone headset, so you'll have to buy two of HTC's lighthouse sensors and VR controllers separately. If you've already got that equipment, then setting up the Vive Pro is as simple as connecting its breakout box to your computer's USB 3.0 and DisplayPort connections, and then plugging in the headset itself. If you're doing it for the first time though, you'll have to find space at two opposing corners of your room to mount the lighthouse sensors. I was able to make do with placing them on my bookshelves, but if you don't have something like that around, you might have to mount the sensors to your walls. It's also a shame that HTC's Steam VR 2.0 sensors won't be available until the end of the year, since those will be able to track your movement in much larger spaces. But I suppose that won't be very useful until we see the Vive's wireless adapter, which is coming this summer. Oh. The first time I used the Vive Pro, it took me a few minutes to figure out how to adjust its new head strap properly. 
Once I got that sorted, I noticed instantly that it fit much more securely and more comfortably than the original. It's not as front heavy as the Vive, which would hurt the bridge of my nose when I wore it too long. The Vive Pro's improved screens made just about everything look better, from text in Viveport to enemies in Superhot. While playing Duck Season, I was able to make out where my distant targets were a bit more easily, and flying around the globe in Google Earth VR felt even more immersive than before. But while the experience is better than the original, it's not exactly a night and day difference. It's certainly not enough to justify upgrading to a pricey new VR headset if you already have one. You'll also have to make sure that you have a computer that can run the Vive Pro at its best. HTC says it has the same minimum requirements as the Vive, an Intel Core i5-4590 CPU or better, and at least an NVIDIA GTX 1060 card, or an AMD Radeon 480. But at CES, the company also admitted that you'll need faster hardware to take advantage of the better visuals. On my recently refreshed rig, which is powered by an Intel Core i7-8800K CPU and a GTX 1080, I didn't notice any hiccups or slowdown across a wide variety of VR experiences. That's also the same video card we saw HTC using at CES, so it's a safe bet for optimal Vive Pro performance. While I appreciated the slightly better visuals, it still felt a bit archaic to be using my original Vive controllers with the new headset. They're larger and heavier than Oculus's excellent motion controllers, which they released in 2016. Valve also has its own modernized VR controllers coming for Steam VR, which are significantly smaller and offer individual finger tracking, but there's no word yet on availability. Basically, there are a lot of downsides to jumping on the Vive Pro bandwagon early, as you'll likely be tempted to replace your controllers and trackers later this year. At $799 on its own, the Vive Pro is a great deal more expensive than the standard $499 Vive kit, which includes the original headset, two base stations, and two motion controllers. You'll have to buy those accessories separately with the Vive Pro, and they aren't cheap. Normally, you'd have to spend another $530 to snag all of those, but HTC is now offering a $299 bundle to make life a bit easier. Still, that means a complete Vive Pro setup will cost $1,098. Yeah, if that sounds I got crazy, a, I well, built a monster it, it, last year. Well, of course, the Oculus Rift is still uh, a solid competitor yeah, too, I got like 30 especially gigs since of RAM, it's now just $399 with all of its sensors it's and superior much, controllers. Uh, at that price, the lower resolution doesn't really seem like a computer, huge deal. My PC, uh, Windows Mixed Reality headsets are another option, especially Samsung's 499 4. HMD Odyssey, 6, which almost matches the Vive Pro's resolution and has great motion yeah, controls. I got it. Uh, another plus see, with Mixed right. Reality headsets, they don't require setting up any what annoying sensors, and they support Steam VR, giving you access to the same games and apps uh, as the Vive. It's running at 4. I give HTC some credit for fixing most of the problems I had with the original Vive, but at the moment, the Vive Pro isn't a significant upgrade without its upcoming accessories. It's expensive pricing so it's the fact that this isn't a headset meant for most people. It's really cool. something for VR developers and designers who want the best hardware in the market right away. Everyone else would be better off with the Vive or just waiting until HTC announces the complete Vive Pro kit with new accessories later this year. Just don't expect that to be cheap either. Pimax then. So these guys are actually a pretty new company based out of China and they are making some very bold claims. So they boast that their VR headset, I've got a prototype of it right here, delivers dramatically better field of view and resolution compared to competing solutions Bullshit from marketing. big name companies like uh, Oculus VF and HTC. And they actually flew all the way out to my studio here in Vancouver to have me try it. But my BS detector started going off pretty hardcore when I realized that they were calling the two 4K displays, one for each eye, 8K. That is at best a little misleading. But, I mean, I'm already in at work on my Sunday due to some scheduling challenges, so what the hey? Why don't we check it out? My weekend oh, nice. trip to the office, by the way, is brought I to you by TunnelBear, a simple nice. VPN that overclock? makes it easy to privately and securely browse a more open internet. Try TunnelBear for free at the link below. That's tunnelbear.com slash LTT. Well, this bag broke. Okay. I guess we don't yeah, get another uh, shot at this then. Probably just eye racing um, right now. I don't, I mean, I'm So right here in my hands, I've got with, what they're calling, emphasis on their calling, because I don't uh, necessarily By the way, how long have you been eye racing? What they're calling the Pimax 
4K. Yeah, the resolution that it's running at here is 3840 by 2160 per eye. So, in order to achieve that, well, they had to put some pretty different hardware in here. Although, there's really not much point um, showing it to you because the finished version of the Pimax 8K is actually gonna have one USB 3, this one has a USB 3 and a USB 2, and it's gonna have a single DisplayPort 1.4. This guy's using dual HDMIs, and then because we're using a laptop for the demo, uh, an HDMI to mini display port adapter to drive the displays. While the displays themselves run at 3840 by 2160, the way that we're actually driving this is with two 2560 by 1440 signals that are being upscaled. If you want to run them at native resolution, you are actually gonna need a higher end product called the Pimax 8K oh, nice. X. And you're gonna need a pretty banging computer because running two displays at 4K is not exactly straightforward, especially if you factor in that they gotta run at 90 <coughs> hertz if you want the kind of fluidity that, well, you're gonna want if you are playing games in VR. Now, size-wise, this thing is really big. It's like kind of chunky looking, but the good news is that when you're gaming in VR, you're obviously not looking at yourself, so all that really means is that your, your wife or your boyfriend or whoever's watching you play VR gets to watch you look like even more of an idiot. Um, but weight-wise, it's actually not bad. You still got that tether drag, but uh, the distribution of weight is actually pretty solid. I gotta give them credit for that. Now tracking is handled with these laser trackers along the outside. Right now they don't look like anything special, but this is pretty early going. Oculus. And huh? this yeah. is pretty cool. So they're gonna ship, they have um, a complete kit that ships with lighthouses, but if you already have an HTC yeah, Vive, you can actually not use your long, existing HTC lighthouses really and just plug and play. And then that's also true. I've always been in the racing of games. any Vive controllers. Like really so those are intercompatible games. with a Pimax back. headset, whether you go with the 8K, the Back 8KX, or the lower end 5K. I'm not a big now that's not guy, to say but, that they don't uh, strive to I've build their own controller. Um, so this is actually a prototype version of their controller. It seems to bear but a lot of what I have right to now, the HTC um, controller, but uh, check. I took my computer out of my computer office and I put it in front of my 55 inch 4K TV. I got my computer out here. I got my cockpit out here. Um, it, I mean, it's better than racing on just one little computer screen. So until I get the Oculus Rift or whatever I'm getting, I'm gonna have it sitting out here in front of my 4K TV. I know, uh, yeah, I, I really can't look left and right like you can, but that's gonna be an amazing feature when I'm able to do that. Yeah, I, you want to hear something funny? I actually bought Project Cars 2 three days ago. Girlfriend came up. Um, we see each other every two weeks. She lives a couple states away. I bought Project Cars 2, played it for about an hour. And I after playing iRacing, I got my refund back. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, PayPal, I, I got my refund back. Uh, it's just nothing compared to iRacing. So I'm thinking, okay, it's like I went to Indianapolis racetrack on Project Cars 2 um, just to see the difference. And it is nothing like iRacing. Nothing at all. It seems way too arcadish after playing iRacing. So I, uh, I quickly got my money back on that. Now something I do have, and I did have for a year, even though I only played it um, yesterday, I, I bought it a year ago when I got my wheel and stuff. I just never had a cockpit up until about six weeks ago. So I bought, uh, what was it, Dirt Rally. I actually played it yesterday, and uh, it's actually pretty fun. I mean, because you actually got to fight the wheel. I mean, it's not like iRacing. It's something different, but it is actually pretty fun. It's something probably to past the time by yeah project cars 2 felt so arcadeish a lot of a lot of guy people are telling me to get try our, our, our set of corso is that the name of it 
I said a Corso. But um, Dirt Rally. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever seen it or played it. But um, it, it's not eye racing, but it's fun trying to hold that car on the, the roads, I guess. Oh, I'm not sure uh, if you got a Facebook or not. Maybe you can add me on Facebook. I'm right. I'm using the uh, Logitech G29 um, racing wheel foot pedals. I got the H shifter, but I don't use it because I mean I might use it in like dirt rally, but there's no way I would keep up with people racing when they're using slap paddles. If that makes sense, but um, yeah, uh, I, I think the H shifter is just for fun. When you get into competitive racing, I don't think the H racers. Uh, the H shifter is worth it in competitive racing, but um, yeah, I got the G29. I'm not sure how that's compared to the G920. I'm not sure. Let me look at that. Logitech 9 G920. Oh, that came out all fucked up. Can I use your card for me? Wow. What's that? Can I use your card for a while membership? For a while membership. A World of Warcraft membership. Yes. How much of your driving license? Oh, I said none of the thing. Huh? I'm, I said none of that one. I'm halfway through the next one. I think you're bullshitting me. You can come look. I mean, uh, um, I don't want my credit card on the while wow, on uh, uh, Blizzard. So what we'll do is we'll get the uh, Blizzard uh, card tomorrow at the grocery store. I don't want my I don't want my credit card on fucking Blizzard. Huh? All right. What? Hold on. Let me check it out. Oh, wow. That's almost just like mine, except I don't have the... Uh, computer screen thing in front of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it almost looks just like mine. Let me see where mine is. Hold on. <clears throat> it should keep track of my orders, shouldn't it? eBay. Da, 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 da. Oh, here's mine right here. Oh, that's not a good picture of it. Yeah. That's mine, but the seat is better than that. I'm not sure why it has that seat on there. Hold on a minute. Yeah, that's mine right there. I didn't pay that much for it. I'm not sure why it's that much money. This is the one I bought right here. Yeah, right here. Yeah, this is mine. So, yeah, it's pretty basic right now. 
I was actually thinking about spending about four four grand next year, getting the one with the hydraulics and stuff. But yeah, mine's pretty basic. That's it. Yeah, I actually play Arma 3. Um, <clears throat> I guess the new tracks, the new season starts in an hour and a half, right? All right, man. I'll catch you tomorrow. Uh-huh. All right. Take it easy. See you tomorrow. All right. Right on. All right. Later.